Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Congregation Bet Tikva as we begin a beautiful Sabbath called Shabbat Miketz, which is the story of Joseph interpreting the dreams of Pharaoh. So let's begin with some wonderful music, thanks to Wendy and Jolene. We're on page 654. <clears throat> In the middle of page 654, we're singing together Erev Shel Shoshanim. It is the evening of the roses. to the beginning of our Siddur, <clears throat> middle of page 128. In the middle of 128 is one of our favorite Shabbat melodies, Yedid Nefesh, the heart's delight. Source of mercy, draw your servant into your arms. This is about God bringing us into the Shabbat and we entering, re-entering into the covenant with the Almighty. Yedid Nefesh. continue now with a blessing over the Shabbat candles. Uh, please turn to 121. We'll read together in the English and then sing the blessing together. Middle of page 121. O source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts 
and our lives. Bless all who enter the sanctuary in need, all who bring the offerings of their hearts. May our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, and love. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech, this week vanished? Is it lost forever? Will I ever recover anything from it? The joy of life, the unexpected victory, the realized hope, the task accomplished. Will I ever be able to banish the memory of pain, the sting of defeat, the heaviness of boredom? On this day, let me keep for a while what must drift away. On this day, let me be free of the burdens that must return. On this day, Shabbat, abide. Help me to withdraw for a while from the flight of time. Contain the retreat of the hours of days from the grasp of frantic life. Let me learn to pause, if only for this day. Let me find peace on this day. Let me enter into a quiet world this day. On this day, Shabbat, abide. So we turn to the Psalms as we always welcome the Sabbath with the beautiful Psalms beginning with Psalm 95. We're on page 130 and we're singing together L'chun Aranana, the first stanza of Psalm 95. <laughs> Raise a shout for God in song, for Adonai is a great God, the great ruler of all divine beings. In God's hand are the depths of the earth, the peaks of the mountains are God's. God's is the sea, God made, and the land which God's hands fashion. Come, let us bow down and kneel, bend the knee before Adonai, our maker, for Adonai is our God, and we are the people God tends, the flock, and God's care. Oh, if you would but heed God's charge this day. Let's continue with words from Psalm 97. We're on page 133. Adonai is sovereign, let the earth exalt. The many islands rejoice. Dense clouds are around God. Righteousness and justice are the base of God's throne. Oh, you who love Adonai, hate evil. God guards the lives of God's loyal ones, saving them from the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous, radiance for the upright. O oh, you righteous, rejoice in Adonai and acclaim God's holy name. So we turn now to the wonderful melody that we enjoy every Shabbat, L'chadodi, <clears throat> Beloved, O come my Sabbath bride. We're on page 138 and we sing, as we always do, verses 1 and 2, and then the final verse 
on 139, Boi Shabbat. excuse me, Boi Shalom. come in peace to celebrate this beautiful Sabbath day. <laughs> Kaddish, the half Kaddish, <clears throat> on page 144, and we all sing this together a cappella on 144. <clears throat> Pagala, Pagala, who is man kari, Imru, Amen, Yeshmira, Mevora, Layalam Yame, Maya, Yepara, Yepara, Vishtaba, Yepar, Yepamam, Yenase, Yenada. Turn the page together, let's sing, lift up our voices for the call to worship, Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach, Le'olam Reading together. 
together the first blessing, we're on 148, middle of 148. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light transforming day into night, distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Sabaoth is your name. Ever-living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on the evening. Baruch Adonai Amariv Aravim. Our second blessing in the middle of page 150. Everlasting love you offered your people Israel by teaching us Torah and mitzvot, laws and precepts. Therefore, Adonai, our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we will meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Day and night we will reflect on them, for they are our life, and doing them lengthens our days. Never remove your love from us. Praise you, Adonai, who loves your people, Israel. Baruch atah Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Together, the words of Shema Yisrael on the next page. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai. Please be seated and relax in your homes, and we'll continue with the words from Deuteronomy. We're on 154, and we're reading the paragraph known as the Ve'ahavta. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, v'chol levavcha, v'v'chol nafshecha, v'v'chol miodecha, v'ayu hadvarim ha'ele, asher anochi metzavcha hayom. Alivavecha, Vishinantam Livanecha, Vidivarta Bam, Vishivtecha, Vivetecha, Uvelechtecha, Vaderech, Uvishachbecha, Ukumecha, Ukshartam Le Otal Yadecha, Vayu Le Totafo Bein Necha, Uktavtam Al Mizuzot Betecha, Uvisha Recha, Lemantis Garu Vasita Mit Komitz Rotai, Vitam Kedoshim Leloechem, Ani Adonai Lohechem, Asher Hotseti Edhem, Meeretz Mitzrayim, Liyod Lechem Lelohim, Ani Adonai Lohechem. You shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Take to heart these instructions with which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Thus you shall remember to observe all my commandments and to be holy to your God. I am Adonai your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Adonai, your God. Adonai Elohechem Emet. So we turn to 158, and we're singing, as we do every Shabbat, Mi Chamocha, who is like unto you, O God, among all the others that are worshipped, who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, working wonders. <laughs> Oh, 
So Wendy is going to favor us with a beautiful flute solo <clears throat> for the words of the music of Hashki Venu. Hashki Venu, that special prayer we say on Shabbat evening, asking God to protect us under the shadow of his wings, guide, guard us and guide us through all of the trials and tribulations of this world that we have experienced, that we're now experiencing. Protect us also from wrongdoing. Be gracious and merciful to us, Hashki Venu. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. So we turn to 162, and <clears throat> towards the bottom of the page are the words Yismechu v'malchutacha. This song contains 24 words, and it is said in tradition that those 24 Hebrew words correspond to the 24 hours of the day, of the Shabbat day. <laughs> to the Tefillah, the prayer with a capital P par excellence. For Shabbat, as you know, we have seven blessings to recite. So if you're comfortable, please stand up and join us. <clears throat> We're on 164. We begin with a verse from the Psalms. And then turn the page quickly and we'll be singing on page 166. Adonai sefatai tita uvi akitilatem cha 
Let's all be comfortable, sit down, relax. We'll do <coughs> the next blessings together in English. On 173, we're reading in English. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch Adonai Mekadesh HaShabbat. And the Ritzei, which you'll find top of 175. Ever present one, may we, your people Israel, be worthy of our deeds and our prayer. Wherever we live, wherever we seek you, in this land, in Zion restore, in all lands, you are our God, whom alone we serve in reverence. Baruch atadnai, shotcha levadcha v'yera na'avot. The blessing of Thanksgiving. Let's read in the middle of 177. When we behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you set in place. What are we humans that you are mindful of us? We mortals that you take note of us. You made us little less than divine, adorned us with glory and majesty. You gave us dominion over your handiwork, laying the world at our feet. How majestic is your name throughout the earth. Baruch atarinai, atov shimcha, ulecha nae lehotot. Our seventh blessing is, of course, the blessing of peace. <clears throat> We're on 178. Let's sing Shalom Rav. <laughs> Oh, 
take a short pause and <clears throat> give everyone time to offer your own personal prayers, meditations, and then we'll continue with the Torah message. So we are <clears throat> smack in the middle of the Joseph story. Chapter 37 through chapter 50 is all about Joseph and his brothers. <clears throat> this is parashah is called miketz, which means it came to pass, meaning after a period of time. After two years, <clears throat> Pharaoh began his dreams. Let me just mention before we start off with this dream story that uh, this is a very magnificent narrative and a complicated story. It's not just about Pharaoh and his surahs. Uh, after Joseph is rescued and becomes the great interpreter, there is a whole other saga that goes on in chapters 42, 43, 44, in which Joseph, who is now the prime minister, so to speak, of Egypt, <coughs> meets up with his brothers who have come down into Egypt because of the famine in the land of Canaan. And Joseph goes through a great deal of manipulations and <clears throat> what shall we say, retributive actions against his brothers because they don't know he's the prime minister, they don't know he's the, as we say, the Gansa Megillah, the number one man in the country, and he wants to uh, inflict a little bit of punishment upon these brothers whom had, <clears throat> as you know, had tried to destroy him years ago. So I'm just going to talk for a moment about Pharaoh's dreams. Can you imagine dreams like this? Dreaming about cows, plump, juicy cows, and then suddenly their skinny, parched, raven, ravenous cows that emerge out of the Nile, and they devour these fat, plump cows. And then a repetition, which is not really a repetition, because nothing is superfluous in the Torah, about stalks of corn. Fat, beautiful, plump ears of corn, and they are devoured by its skinny, parched ears of corn. So what does all this mean? <clears throat> Joseph, as you know, after he's pulled out of the dungeon because the, uh, the captain of the, of the stewards has said to Pharaoh, I remember this young man who was in prison with us. He was brilliant. He knew how to explain our dreams. Pharaoh brings him forth and says, 
here are my dreams, tell me what this means. There, as you know, Joseph says the following, there will, there will be seven years of uh, plenty in the land of Egypt, right? Followed by seven years of famine, of universal famine. He argues and tells Pharaoh, implores Pharaoh to appoint someone who is discerning and sage. In other words, someone with a brilliant mind to take care of the country, to store things up as they needed to be in order to prepare for the seven years of famine. So the, what we want to talk about is what does it mean, navon v'chacham, discerning and sage, S-A-G-E. The rabbis say these two words are not synonymous. They're actually two different ways of understanding or thinking about the world. Um, in fact, Rabbi Nachmanides, the great scholar in the late 1100s, said the following, discerning, a person who's discerning means he knows how to support the people of Egypt from his hand with bread. In other words, he knows how to deal with the tachlis economic issues. And he also knows how to accumulate wealth. That takes a certain amount of mental acuity. It takes a certain amount of discernment, real precise understanding. The word discernment in Hebrew comes from the word to literally to understand, lahavim. Uh, in other words, the first category of discernment means that this new leader, Joseph, has to understand social policy. He knows he needs to build up programs in the country that will actually fulfill the goals that are about to be met. Discerning means the ability to match goals with the appropriate means of achieving those goals. And this is part of Joseph's genius. He has that sense of discernment. So what does to be a sage then mean? Why aren't these two words the same? So our other great commentator, Maimonides, says the following about a sage. That person has the knowledge of how to preserve the produce so it shouldn't rot. It's one thing to set up the social policy and get things going. It's another thing to know how to protect one's assets and make sure they don't get ruined over the course of the good years. So according to this standard, the, uh, according to Maimonides, the, the enlightened bureaucrat, so to speak, should know more than just how to govern. He should know what it takes to protect and keep the, uh, the riches of the country intact because they're looking forward to seven years of disaster. We might say in a sense that this first category is about our human learning and our human structures, how our brains really work. And the second understanding, the second word sage means to understand the natural phenomena and to deal with the natural phenomena that it, that turn out, that work out in everyday life. Let me put it to you another way. It means in the following. It's not enough to just know Torah. It's not enough to just be a great scholar of Bible or of Talmud or of Jewish commentaries. The rabbis in the Middle Ages said, if you're really a knowledgeable, discerning, sageful person, you have to have both Jewish knowledge and what they called mathematical, physical knowledge. You had to have Jewish knowledge and secular knowledge. And Maimonides was the first one to say, you can't even begin to study and reach towards a higher level that would ultimately reach towards prophecy unless first you understand mathematics, you understand astronomy, you understand metaphysics, you understand ethics and, and other natural sciences, which they under, you know, they were able to study in those days. Obviously, they didn't know 10% uh, of what we know today. But Maimonides is saying, it's not enough to just be a religious, smart person. You have to understand what the real world is about. It's interesting, in, in America, when the Yeshiva University was developed back in the earlier part of the 1900s, that's the Orthodox Seminary in New York City. Their motto became Torah Umada, meaning Torah, Torah learning. Umada means science, means the complete compendium of, of all other bases of knowledge. What, what Yeshiva University was trying to say is we want to train traditional rabbis, but they can't be real rabbis 
unless they understand what's going on in the natural world, whether it be geometry, physics, whatever, <laughs> economics, political science. And that has been their motto for over 100 years. And I remember one of my professors saying the same thing to us when we were fourth year students. If you don't know what's going on in the world, if you're not reading The Economist or The Times or The Wall Street Journal or The Washington Post, if you don't really understand how government works, then you'll never understand how to run a synagogue. So I think that's what we're trying to speak, what we're trying to say about Joseph. He had that special quality of discernment and a sageful, insightful mind. He could be both understanding, but he knew how to get practical things done. And that's what made him great. That's how he saved the empire of Egypt. And that's how ultimately he saves his brothers and Papa Jacob later on in the Torah story. Shabbat Shalom. So we want to say a blessing and think of our loved ones, dear folks, friends, and family who are in need of extra health and extra support, spiritual, psychological, and physical uplifting. <clears throat> On this Shabbat, we're thinking of uh, Juan Miguel Rosas and his family, dear friends of Lila, <clears throat> and we're also thinking of uh, Curtis Stevenson and Ruth Ellen Lynch, your dear friends also as well. Our own congregants, Arlene Vinnick, Doreen Hurtig, Lynn Kelly, Flo Vinnick, and <clears throat> also want to think of Elidoro Herrera, the father of Cantor Ephraim, as well as uh, Bonnie Cantor. And do we have any other names we want to mention today? Jim Taylor. And Jim Taylor as well. So please turn to 371. We'll sing together with the accompaniment of Jolene on piano, Wendy <coughs> on flute, Misha Berach, middle of page 371. <laughs> Shabbat morning for Torah study. Just click on the appropriate button when you get your <clears throat> message on your blast on the computer at nine o'clock in the morning. And this coming Monday night is our Board of Trustees meeting. So anyone who wishes to join us and be part of that meeting, we're on Zoom. Again, you'll get an email notification and press on the, pre click on the click. <laughs> We'll all be there discussing our future, uh, very important plans for 2021 and welcoming new board members and working on all kinds of important project, projects. Mazel tov to Robert and Jolene as they were chosen as congregants of the year for, 20, for the year 2020 for all their great service to Beit Tikva. 
And thanks to Leela, Wendy, and Jolene for this service today. Okay, closing prayers, page 586. The Aleinu prayer, which we find on, towards the bottom of the page on 586. If you're able, please stand up. recently taken from us, those who have died at this season in years gone by, and all those whom we have drawn into our own hearts as a blessing, as an inspiration. Zichronam Libracha, may their memory always be a blessing to us. On this Sabbath, their yardside remembrance falls from this day until next Friday, we recall <coughs> Gerald Bernstein, brother of Rob Bernstein. Esther Katz, mother of Gary Katz, Samuel Kurland, grandfather of Joan Kessler, Danny McNichol, brother of Stuart and Connie Rosenberg, uh, Len Tarobin, a friend of our congregation. And we also remember Sidney Weiner, uncle of Todd and Peggy Myers. Uh, uncle of our congregant, Barbara Marigold, Jesse Bresloff passed away, I think over 100 years old. So this would be Shloshim for Jesse Bresloff. Jesse Bresloff. May his, <coughs> may his memory be for a blessing. We're on 598. Let's say the Kaddish together, page 598. Yikadal <coughs> בחייכון ויום אחון וחיי דכו בית ישראל, בהגלה בזמן קרי ואמרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מבורך לעולם עומי עמיה. יתברך וישתבח ויתבער ויתרומם ויתנשא, ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתעלה ושמי דקודשה, בריחו. לילה מכל ברכתה ושירתה, תוש בחתה ונחמתה. Amiran bi amma bi mru amen. Yehi shalom araba min shemaya. Vechayim aleinu bi alkal Yisrael bi mru amen. O se shalom bi mrama. Hu ya se shalom aleinu bi alkal Yisrael bi mru amen. May the source of peace bring us comfort and peace and completeness for all of Israel, for all good peoples on this earth. So our blessing over the wine, the sanctification of this Sabbath day, page 123. <clears throat> the Kiddush. Shabbat Shalom.
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shabbos to everybody. Shabbat Shalom.